Elon Musk believes in the importance of human consciousness, so much so that he believes we need to spread it to another planet, a backup planet. He believed in that mission enough to start an aerospace company, teach himself rocket science, and become chief engineer of a program that pioneered reusable rockets. He also believes in the importance of a transition to sustainable energy. He believed in that enough to develop and lead the world's first successful electric car company, whose mission statement is to accelerate that transition. To further that goal, he open sources the patents of his company, encouraging competitors to follow and improve on his designs. He says his philosophy of action is to take the steps that maximize the probability of a better future for humanity. So far, I'm not describing a man who would be an obvious source of public hatred. But here we are, looking around at recent headlines from the New York Times, The Atlantic, and The Washington Post. We're told that he's a geopolitical chaos agent, prone to baiting and buffoonery. His acquisition of Twitter, we're told, is likely to open the gates of hell. As I was making this, he made an appearance at a comedy show in San Francisco and was widely booed by the crowd. <laughs> Cheers and booze, I see. So this isn't what I normally talk about on this channel, but I thought picking apart what's happening here would give some interesting insights into American politics. So today we're going to dissect why people hate Elon Musk. The first thing to say is that Elon is operating in a polarized time. For decades now, opinions on the left and on the right have been moving away from one another. With that, we're politically segregating. People don't want to affiliate with others who they politically disagree with. We're also increasingly hating one another along partisan lines. Most Democrats believe that Republicans are misguided and a threat to the nation, and most Republicans feel the same way right back at Democrats. So that's the cultural context that we're dealing with here. People on both sides of the aisle have come to believe that people on the other side are dishonest, close-minded, unintelligent, and immoral. So if you're someone in that space voicing your political opinions, you're basically going to have half the country vilifying you. One of those people is Elon Musk, who has increasingly become vocal about his political views, which have increasingly fallen on one side of the political spectrum. He also voices some of his views in a tone that I think he would call playful, but you could also call flippant and even disrespectful. He also appears to sometimes vilify the other side, for example, by branding Democrats as the party of division and hate. I think this part of the answer as to why people hate Elon is pretty straightforward. If you voice your views in a polarized time, and those views land somewhere identifiably on one end of the political spectrum or the other, then people are going to vilify you. And if you voice those views in an inflammatory way that even vilifies people, that's going to make it even worse. I thought that was all worth saying, but the reason why I made this video was to make a point about the relationship between equality and power. So to start this point off, we're going to draw a distinction between success and power. In America, and I think broadly across the modern world, we have a culture that celebrates success. We're encouraged to be successful, and there are all kinds of figures that are held up as sort of aspirational examples of people who have achieved that success. So if you just spend a moment thinking about it, I'm sure you can come up with all kinds of examples, maybe actors or artists or even CEOs. Those successful figures can be broadly loved by the public, but I'm pretty confident that few or any of them make a habit of publicly airing their political views. So the difference here is that powerful people are also successful, but at least part of their success crosses into politics, even if that just means reaching a wide audience with their political views or spending a lot of money on a particular political cause. So powerful people are basically successful people, but with more nuances attached. And while we tend to celebrate successful people in America, we have a much more complicated relationship with powerful ones. You can probably see where I'm going with this. The more Elon voices his political views to a huge audience, and the more companies he accumulates that potentially exert political influence, the more people will perceive him as a powerful person and not merely a successful one. If you listen to what people say about him, especially critics, that's what they tend to talk about. They criticize him for having too much power and even criticize the notion that one person can have that much power. The reason why there's negativity bound up with powerful individuals in America, or at least one of the main reasons it seems, is because it compromises the concept of political equality. 
Equality is a value that Americans broadly share. Equality can mean different things to different people, but one major uncontroversial enough interpretation is to say that Americans broadly celebrate political equality. Americans want equal political rights, and they want to be equal under the law. They also believe they should have an opportunity to shape their lives politically if they're motivated to do so. They should be allowed to vote, or speak at town hall meetings, or run for office, for example. This might be something that Americans are feeling increasingly cynical about, but they generally believe that power should be broken up across society so that individuals don't feel necessarily powerless. If one person is exerting a tremendous amount of political power, then we as individuals will be increasingly subject to the power of that person. We ourselves will become less powerful. We become the ruled rather than our own rulers. In that way, I think Elon accumulating and flexing political power is going to be seen as a regression, a regressive move towards greater political inequality. Of course, people whose politics don't align with Elon's are going to be the most sensitive to that, and people whose politics do align with Elon's might celebrate him because they see him as boosting their cause. Polls seem to bear that out. Since Elon has been increasingly identifying with conservative views, Republicans have embraced him and Democrats have rejected him. I think the perception that Elon is a powerful person also encourages people to have a strong response to him. We think it's more important to take a stance against a tyrant than against any random citizen that we might disagree with. So the people who are against Elon are going to be more incentivized to take a strong stance against him. That in practice can lead to a mass of people surprised by his appearance responding like this. <laughs> Cheers and booze, I see. So basically, if you want to be loved by the public, being successful might get you there, and being powerful probably won't. Elon being perceived as powerful, one-sided, and inflammatory undermines broad support for him and even makes people hate him. I know this was a short one. I made this while I was preparing for a longer piece on democracy and ancient Greece. So stay tuned and subscribe and add notifications if you want to see that. Either way, Thanks for watching and till next time.